Today's Albion Online video is all about fixing the mindset of new players and or stubborn players. This video is mostly going to be covering things about risk versus reward and telling you the truth, the numbers, the math, and all of that fun stuff. Let's just get into it. You'll see what I'm talking about. Topic number one is the fame zero to hero where they see a new brand new character get to level 100 mastery and tier 8 gear in a set amount of time, and I have observed hundreds of these videos, hell, more than that, and even done many tests myself, and I'm going to give you the data and the results and why it doesn't actually matter. Let's go. Straight away, let's get the numbers and the math out of the way. So 0 to 100 mastery is about a little bit under 15 million total fame to, to achieve. Now, on a brand new character, after doing the tutorial, of course, for that three days of premium, it will take you 16 hours in the yellow zone open world mobs. You can technically do this faster, but 16 hours is average. Now, 12 hours in the black zones, and this is with being ganked and being killed and being having, you know, sent back to the royal zones, having to go back to the portals and, and whatnot. And if you have everything lined up, all your ducks are in a row, you have a guild protecting you off screen, you are a game master that works for the company that goes straight to the biggest, worst, most dangerous black zones, and you're doing it during the guild off hours so there's no raids and no gankers out. You can do it in under six hours. That's the world record, supposedly, allegedly. And let's talk about these numbers and why they don't really actually matter. So as a new character in Albion Online, as a new player, your silver is far more important than the speed that it takes to unlock Tier 8 Mastery. What is Tier 8 Mastery? That allows you to wear the highest tier gear for that weapon line, and it unlocks all the weapon's abilities. That's all it does. It doesn't really ma it makes you slightly stronger, but it's not by a lot. So as early as 3 to 4 hours in on a brand new character, you can eventually get the power to 1 to 2 shot all yellow zone mobs with a 5.3 set, which you can quickly and easily resell later on and get your money back. Anyone doing black zone activities, anyone doing full loot zone activities will eventually die. They will die. They will lose that money. They will lose that gear. The guy that holds the, the supposed world record, he was running around with a full inventory of treasure, hoping not to die because he didn't care about the treasure. He only cared about breaking a world record. It is not feasible for a new player to do this. A new player would have lost every single fight that that guy encountered and lost millions of silver worth of loot. When you are in the yellow zones, there is zero losses to be had, and more on that later. But uh, essentially, as a new player, silver is far more important than how fast you can get to tier 8 mastery. Now, once you're established, both economically and with specializations, then you can farm 20 million fame per hour. Yeah, it costs a little bit. It'll, you know, it'll cost you about 9 million silver to 0 to 100, uh, you know, a mastery. 9 million silver isn't a lot of money to someone that's established. And what is, what is important is time. Do you want to spend 16 hours manually fame farming a weapon up, or do you want to spend 45 minutes? That A lot of new players don't realize how these systems work. See, in the game, there is something called combat fame credits, which you can acquire. And um, yeah, that all, all you need is about 7-ish million of these combat fame credits to 0 to 100 mastery a weapon line. All On this character, all of my weapon lines are at 100 mastery. I can't show you... Um, I can show you unmastering like quarterstaff. It's 14.718 million fame. All right, and uh, you know you don't get quite get as much fame credits back as you do when you unspec out of something. So that number's a little bit incorrect. But the point is, is that once you are an established character, who both economically, like I said, and with gear and with specializations, it's it's less than one hour of work to do the same thing that you had to do 16 hours as a new player. Now, let's talk economy while you faction farm, not while you're doing other things like gathering. We'll talk about that next. So, uh, when you are doing open world mobs in the yellow zone, you're going to make about 120,000 silver per hour, which is not a lot, from just picking up silver. Not item drops or any special rare drops, only from silver drops. Now, in the black zone, it's 260k per hour. And that's if you don't die, because if you die, you're going to lose any items that you picked up. You're going to lose the items you have equipped. You, you still get to keep the silver. So the big argument that people say, especially on Reddit, you should never go to Reddit for advice on this game. Everyone is a conglomerate. Everyone is out to get you. Everyone is out to feed you the wrong propaganda to get you to join their guild or whatever the heck. Anyway, the point is, is that when you farm the black zone, yes, open world mobs will give you more silver per hour, assuming that you can kill them in a timely manner with a... 
a weapon that allows you to kill them in a timely manner, with a build that le allows you to kill them in a timely manner, you aren't able to watch streams and listen to music or even pay attention to other things because you're not one-shotting the mobs and you have to look out for gankers constantly. Now, this is just from Silver Drop, so clearly, yes, the Black Zone does technically win if you don't die. However, in the Yellow Zone, there's zero risk of loss. Your money will never, ever, ever, ever go down. Mobs die in one to two hits. It's easy peasy. You don't have to, like, struggle or even try hard. It's just, it's basically just the game plays itself, assuming you have the muscle memory and you just glance over your screen, you know, hit a few buttons, kill the mob, scoot your character over the loot, and then move on. Whereas in the Black Zone, there's an insane risk of loss, guaranteed, basically, if you are solo and guildless, okay? The jackpot potential. This is the big argument that all the Redditors say. Well, well, the jackpot potential is better. And what, what is a jackpot in Albion Online? It means whenever you get a rare drop or something really good happens, like you open a chest and it's just got a lot of money in it, okay? So in Yellow Zone, the biggest jackpot is a 7.4. And in the Black Zone, the biggest jackpot is an 8.4. One tier difference. However, when you're doing Black Zone activities, you have a higher percentage of jackpots, so you will get more jackpots. So... If you're the gambling sort, yes, yes, the black zone can be good, and if you get lucky, it can be good, but you will not get consistent results when doing the black zone. Now, overtime rewards. So here's the thing. When you're doing yellow zone, you are faction flagged for that 15% bonus. You are earning faction points at a very high and quick rate, whereas in the black zone, you cannot faction flag, but you can earn what is called favor. And when you do the math on these two rewards... From one character that farms yellow zone faction points and another character that farms favor, the person farming faction points will uh, basically acquire loot much more quickly through that system. And here's here's what I'm talking about. I'm going to have the text for you. So whenever you go to faction rewards here, every 9,000 faction points, you can open one of these, well, not these specifically, but a chest, a rewards chest. It will contain, on average, 250,000 fame and tomes and around 60 to 100,000 in silver rewards. And you, you can farm this insanely quickly in a yellow zone consistently and safely. Whereas, when you go to a black zone, you farm what is called favor, which you will farm at a much, much slower rate. And the chests are more expensive, but give similar rewards. However, the chests, when you do favor, have a 1 in 428% chance. 1 in 428 to have really, really good drops worth multiple millions. Again, this is a gambler's thing. Because it takes longer to acquire the favor for almost the similar rewards, it's not worth doing. If, like, farming favor is meant for guilds. It's meant for people that do, like, the high, you know, tier mist stuff with, you know, 8.4 mobility sets. You, you're not going to farm favor in a reliable and quick amount of time. So in the end... When you factor in the fact that even though the Black Zone has better silver drops per mob uh, because of the risk and only the slightly higher jackpot chance, uh, the overtime rewards means that the Yellow Zone technically wins in the economy department because economically, even though you are picking up less silver per hour, you are still making more silver per hour from those faction chests. And the fact that you will never lose silver because you never lose silver... You never lose. You There is no losing. There are so many players that, you know, they listen to Reddit's advice, they go to the Black Zone, they die over and over and over again, and they're just burning through money, and then they have to card swipe. So now, let's talk about economy for gathering, because if you aren't gathering, then you're not making silver as a solo guildless player. Yes, you can eventually become a crafter and a transmuter, or whatever it is you want to do, but before then, you kind of have to gather to make money, for to make real serious and good money, and every player should have Gathering maxed out at some point. So, let's talk about Gathering. A Tier 2 mob in a blue zone will respawn within one minute at full stacks. That means when you kill them and you harvest them, you will get a full stack of resources. Tier 3 mobs, 2 minutes to 3 minutes. Tier 4 mobs, even the enchanted ones, are in 4 to 5 minutes for 1 to 2 stacks. It's about 6 to 8 minutes for the 3 stacks. Now, Black Zone, I don't have the exact timers, but I know it is in hours to days. I'm not joking. For Black Zones, Tier 6, Tier 7, Tier 8, the nodes can take very a very long time to come back, if you can even find them. In my experience of two months in a Black Zone guild with territory protection, hideout protection, in the deepest and the highest yield zones in the entire game, in a top 10 guild, I think it's top 25 now because it fell out, but uh, essentially, 
uh, at the time it was, it, you know, it was a top 10. But the point is, is that these zones are swept clean constantly by people that keep timers, people that use cheats, people that have entire discords where they coordinate when resources are going to spawn. And if you're thinking that you can just get an 8.4 node and, you know, be rich, no. Every single guild out there keeps timers on these. And they bring up an army to defend themselves while they harvest it. You will not just willy-nilly go into a zone with an 8.4 node and just grab it for yourself. It doesn't happen. It is not a thing that happens in this game. Maybe if the game fully dies and only a couple hundred people play it, maybe then. But I'm sure still some sweat lord will have it on a timer and kill you with this little gang of, you know, party members. But the point is, I'm going to show you the numbers here in a sec, but if you want to harvest tier 6, tier 7, and tier 8 resources... You're not going to make nearly as much per hour, on average, consistently, farming the Tier 2, 3, and 4 zones. Yes, at some point in the Black Zone, you, might, you may get a 7.3 node. You may get a, a 6.3 node, and it's going to be worth a bunch of silver. And then it's not, and you're not going to see it the rest of the day. You're just not. Whereas in the Blue Zones, every few hours, you will be able to find Tier 4.3 nodes, which you could get. And yes, hackers do exist in these low-level zones as well. So you are competing against radar hackers for the enchanted nodes there, but some they're not. Old, there's not as many people out there in these zones. The blue zones are pretty desolate, and they aren't as populated as the yellow zones. This is why you would gather in the blue zones. Now let me compare and show you why that farming tier two mobs and tier four mobs specifically are just far superior than farming tier six, seven, and eight. So let's take hide for example. The lowest tier resource tier two hide is forty silver each. I can pull it up here in the market and type hide 40 silver that's the low ball uh, on average let's see yeah on average it's about 37 right now it's at 40 so it th these numbers are close enough not exact one mob per tick or i'm sorry one mob with three ticks is 24 hides 888 i can find stacks of eight or more of these two, two tier two mobs in a cluster clustered together and every minute they will come back to life with full stacks now, if I harvest them every single minute, this makes me 7,680 silver per minute. Doing so, I can fill 96 journals per hour. One journal is 57 hide. Therefore, here's the math. You take the amount I can make per minute times 60. That's how many minutes are in an hour. That's, that's your silver right there. And then you take 96 journals into laborers, into hide, and that's another 200-something thousand. So, 679,000 silver per hour if we just harvested tier 2, which we're not going to do. We're going to harvest tier 3 and tier 4 mobs, but I just want to compare with you real quick. Just doing tier 2 mobs this way, from the lowest tier resource, about 680,000 silver, right? Now, here is tier 6 hide, and for that same amount, 679,680 to buy it, I would only need 576 hides from a tier 6 enemy. So how long would that take? So here's the quick and dirty right now. To beat tier 2 with just tier 6 mobs, we need to skin 576 hides. So if every mob had maximum ticks, which they don't, um, and we get 2 hide per tick, and tier 5 and up mobs have 5 ticks, they have 3 to 5 ticks. Not all of them have 5 ticks, by the way. Like hyenas only have 3 ticks, I believe. I'm pretty sure. Uh, so that's 10 hides per mob. We gotta kill and skin about 58 full tier 6 mobs. Well, how long does that take? So here I am on the test server, and I just want to show you what's going on here. I have full tier 8, you know, gathering. I'm wearing tier 8 gear in a black zone. No one would ever wear this amount of gear. This is about 50 million in gear. I've got the journals. I've got the tier 8 abalone skinning knife. And because it's the test server, wouldn't you know it, every single gathering is maxed out at level 100, meaning we will gather as much and as fast as possible with a pork pie. And so here I am in this tier 7 zone, and we're going to, uh, I'm just going to skin one hyena real quick and uh, show you how much we can earn per hyena. So let's eat the pork pie, let's pop the uh, the jacket here, and then pyroblast these two uh, hyenas. Okay, so because it's a test server, every hyena that we encounter will be full stack. So there we go. So that's one. Look how long this takes. So we got three hides. We got three hides. Okay, okay. We got two hides. We got three hides. And we got three hides. So, again, you won't have maxed gathering. No one in the game does. Now, that was four hides. That was three hides. That was three hides. That was three. That was four hides right there. Okay, there we go. That's another four hides. So, with maxed possible gathering, 
and the Avalonian skinning knife, which you won't have in the black zone, and with, you know, tier 8.4, which you won't have, we're, and max spec, we're getting about three to four hides each, okay? And because everything is going to be maximum stacked, I should be able to get enough hides pretty quickly. What about our journal uh, progress? What I'm going to do now is I'm going to time myself and see how long it takes to get 576 hides, and I'll be right back. All right, so it's about 15 minutes to hit our mark here, so 596. There we go, we just hit it. So right below the 15 minute mark is how long it took. We filled three journals. This one just started, so three journals, 596. 15 minutes in the best possible case scenario. The best possible case scenario being that this is the test server. Every single animal is alive and at full stacks and is not being harvested. In reality, to get this many, you're not going to do this in 15 minutes. You're simply not. It's impossible. There's no way. You're not going to risk 50 million in gear to insta-kill the enemies. You're not going to have every single hyena you encounter at full stacks. You're not going to be able to get 3 to 4. You're only going to get 1 to 2, even with premium and pork pie and tier 8 regular gathering gear. Not Avalonian, but regular. You're going to average 1 to 2 hides. And when you do kill the hyenas on the live server... You're only going to get one to two to maybe three ticks if you're lucky. You're not going to get five ticks every single time. So what this means is that what took us 15 minutes would normally take you 60 to 75 minutes. So tell me again why I would want to risk it in the black zone. Also, if you're wondering how much does uh, one of these journals give, it can give up to 30. It's not guaranteed. And it could give more if I had the furniture, but again... I don't really have tier 6 skinners set up, but um, one, if one journal is like an average, let's say it's 34, right? So that would be like 90 to 100, and we only got, um, you know, an extra 100 from the journals, right? So really, we would only have to form, farm 496 um, <laughs> instead of 596. So uh, again, you're, you're, saving one, you're saving 10 minutes with journals, essentially. That's all you're saving. Uh, <laughs> t 10 to, you know, maybe 12 minutes using journals, which you should always use journals anyway, absolutely, but the point I'm trying to get at here is that you're not farming this amount in 15 minutes on the live server. It doesn't matter if you're in a guild and you're deep, deep, deep into the black zone and you go over here to the um, the region quality and you're in these dark purple zones, right? It doesn't matter. You're, you're, you're simply just not going to farm that much that quickly. It's Unless the game fully dies... Or you're like the first person out in the zone on when the EU server launches. You're you are not getting this amount of money in a reasonable amount of time. I thought that I could farm this amount with max spec, max gear on an empty freaking server much faster, but it still took 15 minutes. 15 minutes at the best possible rate. I mean, I could literally just load up a character on the live server and show you how impossibly difficult it is to reach this number. But I've already done that on several of my videos. As a matter of fact, I'll show you some of those videos. Here is a video where I farm in a tier 8 zone while in that guild, and because of gankers and the, just the sheer lack of resources, and I'm using a tier 8 skinning set. I made 191,000 silver, I only got 88 of those tier 6 hides, 9 tier 8 hides, and then a treasure from a random, you know, hidden treasure that's worth 20k. And I, did, I didn't even fill a single tier 8 journal, like, it, it sucks. And here is a video clip where I did 30 minutes in a red zone, not quite a black zone. You can still see that in 30 minutes, I only got 54 of those tier 6 hides. 54. Now, I did get a bunch of other stuff, and in 30 minutes, I made 324k times 2. That would be 628k. Still, it's, it's still not beating the tier 2 mobs, is it? Nope, 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 nope. And here is skinning in a tier 7 zone, and you'll notice for 30 minutes without being killed, using tier 6 skinning gear, tier 6 skinning knife... If we subtract the value of the knife, which is 12k at the time, uh, that puts us at 160k times 2. That's 320k per hour. You can see here in this example, I only got 95 hides. 95 of those tier 6 hides. And you need 596 of those hides to equate for just farming tier 2 mobs. It, it's stupid. And here is even another video, again, with tier 6 gear. This is in a tier 6 black zone. We only got 55 of those tier 6 hides. Now, combining everything that we got here, and, and this video is, is a lot older. We also got a baby drop, and um, we're at 350k, so that would be 700k. So, again, this, this video was, I don't know how many years ago. This was two years ago, and um, back when the economy, back when things were worth more, 
It still doesn't beat far. It be, like it technically doesn't beat farming tier two hides. It just doesn't. And then here is from gathering in a tier four blue zone in one hour. This is one hour. We we got we got the three baby drops. The eighty seven journals not quite ninety six because I was harvesting other things. You know, just randomly you can see all the tier two hide, the tier three hide, the tier four hide, the tier four point three hide. One million. Uh, silver in one hour. Y it can't be beat. It's completely safe. There's no reason to ever, ever gather in the red or black zones. Ever. And look, even way back in the day when I didn't have max skinning or even tier 8 skinning, I'm out here in a tier 6 set doing blue zone skinning. You can tell that the world was uglier back then. But even that's still nearly a million per hour if you subtract the cost of the Avalonian skinning knife. That could be three to 400k, you know. It's, uh, Let's see, no, this was in 30 minutes, so yes, this is still pushing 1 million per hour right here. And, uh, you know, that's with only one baby drop, and this is before tomes could drop in the game, the, the, the gathering tomes that are worth, you know, 100k each. And it doesn't have to be hide, you can do stone gathering. Like, here is just tier 2 stone gathering, just tier 2, a little bit of tier 4, a little bit of tier 3, and uh, 765k and, uh, in 30 minutes, okay, that was 1.6 million. Now, obviously, the stone market's kind of going wild and crazy at the moment, and man, did I have a lot of liquid silver <laughs> at the time back then. How old is this video? This video is eight months ago. Man, I miss having liquid silver like that. I don't have nearly as... I've spent it all. <laughs> but still, the point is, is that you can, you can make this silver in the blue zones. I'm not joking. Now, part two of the economy, because I don't want to spend all day on the gathering aspect, but if you did tier 7, tier 8, it does not matter. The only time you ever pull ahead in a black zone is if you get insanely lucky... And you find like a 7.3 enchanted node. And even then it's not worth the risk. And uh, you know in two months that I spent in the black zone. I spent. I devoted two months to the black zone. Gathering and doing everything I could. To try to prove myself wrong. And I didn't find a single point three node at all. The entire time. The, the entire zones were picked clean by hackers and massive guilds. I mean think about it. You have hundreds of people running through these zones constantly for, for guild stuff. Whereas in the blue zones, you have like, what, 8 to 20 people, like, at a time, at most. And on off hours, maybe like 3 to 4 people in a blue zone. You, there's no competition in the blue zones. That's why, pe that's why it's simply better. Anyway, economy part 2 crafting. Here's what you should avoid. Gear crafting. If you do not have a guild, and you do not have a black zone hideout that is pumped up, uh, to give you the maximum possible crafting percentage, you are you can't compete with these people. You cannot compete with the crafting cartels. It is that simple. Now, potions, yes, you can turn a profit crafting, and I'll show you that later because uh, this character is a potion crafter, and I'm almost at max focus. So we're going to dive into that. But the rare materials to craft a damn potion cost way too much. I'm talking to max potion crafting right now is going to cost you around 400 million or more. Like, I, I'm not kidding it. I think I spent half a half a billion maxing my potion crafting on this character. And uh, on the 15th of April, there is a patch where the rare materials will give you 10 potions instead of 5. But because fame week will be over, you're, you're only getting 15% more fame by waiting till the 15th. So this number will go down a tiny bit, but not by much. And it'll be impossible to max out on the EU server because... It's going to take a, a year of backstock to, to build up. That's a retail term, by the way. Man, my, uh, I hate retail. Never work retail. Uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a long time for items to pile up in the market for you to buy to be able to max it out anyway. Even if you are just buying and studying, it's going to take a long time. Refining is cartel controlled. It is absolutely cartel controlled. If you do not own a shop stall that you use yourself for refining... You are losing money on this almost entirely always. Sometimes you can find a small crack in the niche and you can profit. And yes, it is possible to profit with refining, but you have to do a mountain of math every single day in spreadsheets and look at markets. And then you have to wait for those materials to sell, which can take a while. You have to wait for a whale to buy all your rare materials out, which could take a month. It, it is, it's not good. It's not good. Avoid refining. Don't worry about refining, okay? Now, the good food crafting. I've always talked about food, and I wish I, I don't have uh, my chef, you know, active with focus, so I can't show you, but uh, it can't really be monopolized by the cartels or controlled. And yes, if you craft in Carleon, you get a bonus, but because everyone crafts in Carleon, the food is so cheap there that uh, you'd have to transport it out. And due to all the red zone gankers and hackers and cheaters and organized 
politics of red zone ganking. You're not making it out of Carleone with that food. Simple as. And so, you can profit pretty much anywhere that you want to sell food, doing just about any food, though you will have to do, to do the math, if you want to know how to maximize your profit. Do you want to know what exactly to craft in order to spin a huge profit? I have a video just for you, and that video is this one. However, it is for members only. You can see here, members only. How do you become a channel member? Well, below all of my videos, and this video was put out four days ago, so it's very fresh and very recent. Become a channel member, you click this join button right here, and five bucks a month will get you videos that are too good for the public, that are, if I, if I release them to the general public, it would crash markets, it would ruin a lot of fun gameplay mechanics, and all my best secrets are behind a paywall. I'm sorry, but uh, because I am the poorest of YouTubers that play this game, I, I don't get to be like those Twitch streamers and YouTubers that live in $400,000 freaking houses. No, I live in the poverty, in the ghetto. And because of that, I have to be able to eat and pay bills, and I rely on members like you... <laughs> to, uh, y you know, to sustain myself, because ad revenue simply doesn't do it for me. And with that said, there's plenty of other videos here with lots of other topics that you would love to watch. Five bucks a month is not a lot to ask. I know if you're from a country, or you're young, or, you know, whatever, that it's really hard to make money, that you can't watch these. And I'm sorry, uh, but hey, if I ever truly make it someday on YouTube and grow big enough, then I won't pay you all anything, I promise you that. But until then, if I don't get to eat or pay bills, then I go homeless, and then it's game over, no more videos at all. So, this is the only way for me to survive because I refuse to do stupid sponsorships, I refuse to sell you cheap Chinese products, I refuse to sell you VPNs that you don't need, or talk about crappy cell phone games, besides this game, of course. So, there you go, and uh, that is exactly what to craft. Let's get into just some random crafting, though. So, here's what pa crafting potions at maximum specialization is like on an established character. I have... Nearly maximum focus, 30,000. I'm on a mammoth, so I can transport a bunch of heavy stuff. The first thing I'm going to do as a potion crafter is check the potion markets. They're pretty cheap today, 340. That's very good for me. And, uh, yeah, that's a really nice and fair price. Thank you so much, 340. Just a few days ago, they were over 1,000. And so that makes me happy. The next thing I'm going to do... But I'm not going to do a mountain of math. I'm just going to pick a random potion and check on it. Let's do minor poison because this is the first thing you can do as a potion crafter. They're pretty low right now. That's not a juicy number, but let's see the market history. Average 614. Well, it's above average by 3%. That kind of sucks. Not going to lie. And uh, I'm going to do it anyway. So I already know the ingredients. That would be burdock. Burdock is the ingredient. Now let's check burdock real quick. The average price is 322. It's being sold for way under that. Oddly enough, because it is a craft week. Yes, 311, it looks like. 24 hours, 304 would be above average. That's fine. 311 is more than enough. Okay, now let's check um, comfrey. That's the second ingredient. And it is at an average of 302, average 321. So it went up. Now, this is a little bit more pricey. And I want to look at the. Oh, this is way too pricey right now. This is way too pricey. I have to craft something else. All right, let's look at Moonshine. Moonshine is at 263, so it's selling above average. Ooh, way above average, actually. Moonshine might not be bad right now, but Moonshine is a product of pumpkins. So let's check the pumpkin prices. And uh, right now, 255 and 280, so uh, not too bad here. Yes, I can. It looks like I can buy some pumpkins. For 274, and then turn that into moonshine for a little bit of profit. Not the best. Uh, yeah, it's really not the best flip, but it, it's worth doing. So let's just let's buy some pumpkins. All right, let's just buy some pumpkins here, and I'm just gonna buy the stack of 9.99 right here. And there we go. That's our first purchase. So now let's check um, snaps. So potato snaps 284, average 290. So below average. Okay, four weeks, 253. Above average for the four weeks. And it uh, looks like the big stack is 286. Not bad. But how about potatoes? How much do potatoes cost? Well, potatoes are looking a little pricey right now. Uh, the big stack being 297. Average 295. Average 271. So it's it's a little... Uh, let's check snaps again. Uh, snaps are... Yeah, I can, I, I can make that work. I, it's not the best profit. But it, it, but it is profit for me, and, and you know, I just want to burn this stuff so I can go play the game. So I'm just going to buy a stack of 9 dollars for that. Now, uh, let's see, we got Moonshine, we got Schnapps, what about Hooch? 
Corn Hooch. Oh boy, let's see Hooch. 48, 239, so it's above average there. 24 hours, 236, it's still above average there. Nice, nice, nice. That's good for me. Let's check the price of corn now. And uh, I, I, I just want to check the price of corn. Bundle of corn, so we'll type that. Bundle of corn. All right, 270. 285 here. Let's just go ahead and pull the trigger on that. So now we have three items that we can craft for a little bit of profit, but I still want to craft some other things as well. Looking at Major Healing Potion, let's see. Uh, Market-wise, we're selling very slightly above average, not like 1%, whoop de doo nothing special there, but it's below on the four-week. Uh, how much sells per day? It, let's see. That is 6,000 per day. What's the ingredients? We got Fox Glove. Let's check Fox Glove. Okay, real quick. Fox Glove. So there we go, Fox Glove. I want the big stack here. I want the 999 stacks at 352. That's above average on both. So not not good there. Uh, so let's find something else. All right, Gigantifies. I can already tell that these are down. These are down bad. Uh, but let's let's check the market anyway. Um, it actually says it's up by 100 there or 2%. Okay, okay. Down by 11. Yes, they are down bad. I knew it. But let's look anyway. So we already we already checked Fox Glove, but it's not a major ingredient. What about Mulane? Mulane? I don't know how to pronounce this, but anyway, Mulane's not looking too bad. It says it's above. Well, it says it's above average on the four weeks, and uh, it's about average zero percent. So hey, not bad. I think we have our winner here, and uh, so we're going to buy two stacks at three sixty five. So there's one, and then I'm gonna again. I'm you don't have to do this my way. This is just a. Uh, how we're doing it and then we're gonna buy one stack of fox glove there we go that is a uh, tier six tier five yeah there we go that's tier five material and one stack of fox glove and again we're not going to use all this this is just the quick and dirty method to do it there we go and then for gigantify what else do we need and yes i did misspell it but that's okay the game understands we need goose eggs and corn hooch all right so Goose egg, there we go. That is, uh, that's not goose eggs, but, um, there we go. We only need about, you know, 500-ish. We'll just buy the 520 there. And then we're gonna make our own corn hooch anyway, so we're good to go on Gigantify Potions. Let's go craft. Now we're gonna select the cheapest bench, which is right here, this 340, there it is. And I'm gonna walk my mammoth all the way over there. Okay, so, off topic for a second, this guy's mount, look, oh, there he is. Yeah, this guy's mount. What is this? The, the Yule Ram. Okay, this is a special... You can't get this mount, but it looks like he's riding a motorcycle. Like he's like riding... Look, it looks like he's riding a little motorcycle with how he's got the handlebars and stuff, so that's really cool. These guys are following me around because, um... <laughs> celebrity over... Oh, he's got the horn! <laughs> that's so cool. Alright, so right now, our estimated market value is 1,900,000 about. And so we're just going to refine a bunch of stuff here. Now, to refine all these pumpkins with Focus, we're going to be using Focus. We're going to pay 15000 So here's how to do the quick and dirty math. The quick and dirty math is pretty simple. You take your estimated market value. You add that estimated market value by the crafting amount. So it would be $1,900,000 and about 30000 Okay, and then we're going to hit craft, and I'm going to skip this for you. So here's the quick and dirty math. We spent about 900 Focus. I rounded up. I know it's not exact. And we spent 15k, and our estimated market value went uh, to 2 million 31,000, right? And um, now I think it was uh, 1.903, not not, not 1.93, maybe. Am I am I doing that right? Yeah, I think I have a zero. No, 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 that's right. Okay, so essentially we went from 1.93. Hello, game. Can you stop making the tooltip disappear for some reason? Uh, to 203 million. So essentially we made. Uh, a little under around a hundred thousand with that craft. That's a hundred thousand silver at nine hundred focus. Let's pop out the calculator, and um, so ten thousand focus per day divided by nine hundred, whatever. That's eleven point eleven infinity times, uh, times a hundred thousand. So that means I'm making about a million right now. I'm making a million silver per day by refining moonshine. So not the best, really not the best. And again, the math isn't isn't absolute at all. It is absolutely not, not even close to absolute. But it's the quick and dirty round method. So I do know at least I am profiting, but I could be profiting by crafting something else. But I've already, you know, pulled the trigger and bought these ingredients anyway. And to do the exact math, you need to spreadsheet everything. You need to find out exactly how much you're buying for and selling for. And to make real profit, you would never do. You would never straight up buy ingredients. You never would. You would absolutely instead just do buy orders for as cheap as possible 
And then you would do sell orders for as high as possible, meaning you would sell at or above the market value and wait a month until it sells whenever a whale gets desperate and buys out the whole inventory. So uh, what I'm doing here, it's still making a profit, in it, but it's not that much. It, it could be way more. So let's do the same math again, this time with the major Gigantify potions, which are, you know, probably going to be a lot better. So if I look at my estimated market value right now, 2513850 I got it up on screen for you. The crafting fee, I'm going to round that up because it's 59 point whatever K. It's, we're just going to round it up to 60K, add that to our estimated at 2573850. That's how much our technical estimated market value starting is. And when I hit craft with 3043 focus... So we can do that about three times per day. We'll just say, we'll just round it up. Three times a day. Why not? And uh, we're going to go ahead and craft this. I'm going to skip that. Now, after crafting here is the math. You can see that the estimated market value jumped up to 3272969. When you do the math on that, that is a profit of 699119 And we can do that three times a day or technically 3.333333 whatever times per day if you want to be more exact. Which means we're making a profit each day crafting this. Uh, 2 million to 2.3 million silver per day, and um, it's it's not that bad, is it? It's pretty good, and there's a way to increase this even more, again, with buy orders and sell orders, and growing, if you even have alts that grow the crops yourself, then that's another way to even increase the profits even further beyond. Now, this is not even the most profitable potion to craft, which I'm not going to tell you because why would I give away that trade secret? I gave that away to members only. You can check the members only videos that I just showed off earlier if you want to know more. But essentially, this takes minutes to do. This is minutes AFK in a save zone. I go to the market, I grab some items, I go over here, I craft some items, and I'm making millions every single day, right? And, and because of that, uh, you know, new players, you know, you can't make millions within minutes doing this. Obviously, you have to go out and gather. And as a brand new player without tier 8 items, you can't gather a million per hour. But you can work your way towards gathering a million per hour. And once you have that gathering available to you, then you can start working on maxing out your crafting, which once you do, you will be in the hole for a while. As a brand new crafter, you're not going to make this kind of money at all. It's impossible to, right? But once you do max out a crafting niche in Albion Online, every single day you just print silver. You just print silver, and there it is. That's your like daily allowance, fun bucks, fun money. You know, go out and, and buy yourself an ice cream money, okay? And uh, that's that's kind of part of the experience and part of the game. But uh, a lot of these YouTubers, they don't even do this. Like the majority of YouTubers and Twitch streamers aren't crafters. They don't have max crafting. They don't have crafting alts. They don't focus on crafting or the economy side of the game at all. They just uh, PvP, and when they run out of money, they card swipe or have their fans give them silver. I mean, I'm guilty of having my fans give me silver, too, of course. We all are. It's part of being famous. But the, the point is, is that, uh, you know, as a regular player who doesn't have a Twitch or YouTube channel, uh, this is how you make your daily fun buck money. And whenever someone complains that you're spending six to nine million silver on respec costs or auto respec and satchel costs in order to get your mastery to level 100 in 45 minutes well it's it, it's not nine like nine million silver isn't a lot that it would just be four days of crafting potions oh no do you want to do you want to like craft potions for four days it takes minutes to do and then go out and fame farm for 45 minutes to max out mastery or do you want to spend 16 hours wearing the weapon to max out its mastery. And uh, I don't know about you, but uh, time is more valuable to me. But, you know, if, if you have 16 hours to just burn and you'd rather have the 9 million silver, then you do you. But everyone else that's smart about their time and their money knows that it's better to just fame up a set like Shadow Caller in order to fame farm everything else insanely quickly and then rely on your economy side to save you that time. And finally, what about PvP? We covered the PvE side, the leveling up, the faming up. We've covered the economy side, getting money. What about PvP? The whole point of the Albion Online, the whole reason people play it, blah, 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 right? Here's the, the absolute truth about PvP, okay? The PSYOP the, that all the Twitch streamers are going to shill to you and, and the YouTubers is that if you're good at video games, that you just win. But that's not the truth, okay? This only applies if you are against new players, more inexperienced players, or that you're running a counter build 
and they don't realize that you counter their build. That is the pure simplicity of it all. All right, and uh, let's let's dive into this. You will generally be losing any fight that you encounter someone in if you aren't a direct counter to their build, if you are below 200 item power to them, to their armor and to their weapon. Not their total item power, not their average item power, but their armor and weapon item power. This is just simple basic math, and this also applies if you're the same type of, of PvP matchup, like kite versus kite build, brawl versus brawl build, etc. The only actual people that profit from PvP in this game are the top skilled bros that abuse 8.4 or meta builds or mobility builds in the mists. This is Goldstein and Juan. Um, the people slaving away for 15 to 30 minutes per fight in the corrupted dungeons, but their silver per hour sucks. They're winning at PvP fights, but they're wasting their time on running around and resetting over and over until both players' maximum percent HP is dropped due to the mephit bats that spawn in these corrupted dungeons it's not fun it's the dumbest thing ever but all they care about is the fight and not about the profits then you have the rats which is i'm part of using flat four and 4.1 sets who wait and take opportunities to yoink as much high tier gear as possible from players that overextend for me i make about a million per hour doing this you could make more but uh you know i've, I've done this for a long time and i think one million per hour is very generous finally uh, red zone gank death squads, and this does not apply to solo players. This only applies to group players. Organized group players in discords using multiple scouts, using multiple phones, GeForce Now accounts, with those naked mules and naked oxes set up all over the red zone maps, who scout and use cheats and radar hacks. These guys make 9 to 12 million per hour on the low end, and they make way more than that whenever there's juicy targets. Uh, but this is going to, like, slowly dwindle? Due to the splitting of the the new EU server joining and the profits dropped a lot whenever Asia launched. So this is only going downhill, but also this is not a solo activity anyway. PvP in Albion Online, sadly, truthfully, besides the mists, is groups. Who has more people? Who has the better gear? That is the simplicity of it. It would be like, you, you could take a pro player in League of Legends. Let's, let's take, I think Faker is the best League of Legends player in the world. I don't know. I don't pay attention to esports anymore but at one point he was the best let's give him a level four character okay and then let's give you someone that's put up about a thousand hours into the game and give you a very high geared level 12 character well do you think faker can still kill you well maybe if you he has the absolute counter to your character but doubtfully no not only is he under leveled and under geared you you just out you you have the higher levels the better gear you win he has to run away you may not be able to kill him but he cannot kill you and if he man fights you he's dead essentially right but what about if there's three of you let's say he's level nine and you're level 12 and there's three of you that are level 12 and he he can't run let's say you have a the complete counter that can hold him down he can't escape again i haven't played league in in like 10 years but essentially, uh, he's still going to lose that fight. His his winning choice is to not fight you and is instead to avoid you and farm up and get better gear and get levels until he can fight you. And so that's what this whole video is about, trying to teach you that by staying in the save zones and being smart with your time and being smart with your silver, you will eventually be able to compete with anyone and everyone in this game. But the YouTubers and the Twitch streamers will mislead you and tell you otherwise that, oh no, you can make a brand new character in Zero to Hero Dual Swords in the in the mists, in the roads, and you'll be better off for it. No, you will not be better off for it. In the long run, you will be behind, you'll be broke, and you will be begging for silver or card swiping. That is how it truly is. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'm Swole Benji. Mwah! Leave a like on the video because you know it's true. A lot of people are going to downvote this because they're 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 just closed minded and they they can't they don't understand. They have too low of an intelligence. Their IQ is too small to comprehend what I'm telling you. And they're going to, you know, thumbs down the video because they disagree. <laughs> and with that said, click the the video on the right side of your screen or if you don't click the video on the right side of your screen. The next time you have an item delivered to wherever you live, the delivery driver is going to throw it down really hard and smash whatever's inside.